everybody and welcome to today's live panel discussion where we are here to talk about all things social science here at Athlone IT. Today I'm delighted to be joined by Ollie Hegarty who is Head of Department and Sarah Hughes who is a Student Ambassador within our Applied Psychology course. We just want to also let you know that we are here for you as much over the next coming weeks as you embark on your decision making process. We are not only here for you through virtual capacity, for example we are running live web Q&As, we are also hosting our virtual guidance which is an excellent opportunity for you to log on a book a 30 minute zoom or phone call consultation with our student recruitment team to get any insight into accommodation the courses themselves or student supports so to kick off with today's live panel discussion i would like to welcome both ollie and sarah and how are you both today ollie do you want to give me a little bit of a general overview into the courses available in the department yeah the department of social sciences has uh, undergraduate programs in three broad areas first of all there's social care uh, secondly there's applied psychology, and thirdly, there's early years education and care. So if I could just start with social care, we have two yeah, programs in social care. We have a level eight, four year, Ab initio program. We also have a level seven uh, program, which is three years, uh, both very similar. Just one has that honors degree that extra year. Mm -hmm. I can say more about that later. Mm -hmm. uh, second area, as I said, is applied psychology. That's a relatively new course that we introduced three years ago. Uh, and as you'll meet Sarah in a moment, Sarah is one of our our first year intake, and that's why she's now going into her final year of the program come this September. Uh, really exciting program, and we're just on the cusp of getting uh, accreditation from Psychological Society of Ireland. We're very hopeful that will be in place before uh, September. And the final uh, area, as I said, is the early years educational care. And once again, we have two programs in that area. We have a level seven, three year program, and we also have the level eight honors degree, Abinitia, which is over four years. Brilliant. So, Ollie, I know that you mentioned as well that obviously in the social care and the early years care and education, we all offer both the level seven and the level eight, but also students who enter the level seven have an opportunity to progress to an add on in the level eight in both areas as well, don't they? Absolutely. Yeah. So, as I said, the students who elect to take the level seven in social care are indeed those students who, who prefer to do early years and like to do the level seven. Once they finish their degree, which is three years long, they can do a one year top up. sort of an add-on year, which gives them that honours degree, which is really important for some students who wants to progress to postgraduate study, uh, etc. So, so that's often the motivation for doing the extra year. Brilliant. And obviously to talk about applied psychology, a hugely beneficial course to anyone who's looking to do it. But do you want to talk to me about the unique factor of applied psychology here and what is kind of attracting students to this course? Yeah, I think one of our big differentiators is exactly in the title. Mm -hmm. It's applied psychology. If you looked around through the, the uh, undergraduate courses available in the country, you'll find that there's only two uh, which, which have that applied uh, badge, if you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And that's ourselves in the University College of Cork. Um, our applied course is applied in, in a number of ways. Firstly, we have a, a work placement, uh, which happens in third year. So Sarah, uh, who you'll speak to in a moment, mm -hmm. Sarah has just come off, just finished her work placement uh, a couple of days ago. So it's a really exciting opportunity. So that's a sort of a 12 to 15 week experience that students have to undertake in a variety of settings. Uh, and this is our first year to do it. So we, we will build on those, uh, those, uh, those options, if you want to call them those placement options over the next couple of years. So I'm really exciting. Uh, different ranges of experience from research activity to working with uh, young people and adults with, uh, with intellectual difficulties, etc. So quite hands-on applied. So it gives them a really good taster of some of the areas of work that psychologists get involved in after, after graduating. Um, other aspects that are, that are applied are the, the we have a, we, about a quarter of the course overall is dedicated to research. So students coming off the course will have really strong foundations in research. So that makes it really applied as well. So if they want to go on and progress to do postgraduate research, for example, a master's or indeed a PhD, they'll be very well equipped uh, to, to undertake that without any kind of concerns about the research competence. So that's, that's a second area that makes it very applied. And finally, uh, the, the range of lectures we have on the program have lots of experience themselves in working in the field in psychology. So they can bring that, if you want to call it that, reality to the classroom. so that the students have got a chance to integrate the theory and practice through the lens of very experienced lecturers who can apply the learning uh, to practical situations. So. Brilliant. That was an excellent overview, Ollie. And I think it's really important for students to understand what the title actually means and understand what the applied psychology is all about. And talking about those three areas is really excellent. So, Sarah, I think it's important to jump to you now when we've obviously highlighted the three key areas of applied psychology. So firstly, we'll talk about the placement. So tell me a little bit about your placement and how the 12 weeks benefited you. 
So I had a really good experience on work placement um, with the Applied Psychology course. So I had the opportunity to do my work placement with the counselling service here in AIT. And as a student, I don't have access to any students who were using the service or any of their data. So mainly we were working on student outreach initiatives. So this was kind of connecting with the students to hear what they wanted from the counselling service and relaying that back. So it was kind of just talking about positive mental health on campus and how we can bring that to the students. We also worked on uh, delivering workshops. So we would research and create a workshop which could be delivered to students. And we also worked on social media. So we would create posts for the social media. So we had to use a lot of our research skills here, which we had learnt over the years in college. Brilliant. And Sarah, I know that Ollie mentioned research as well. And often when students might be researching a course, they might see, for example, modules like research methods. So do you want to talk to me a little bit about how the research actually is intertwined in your course? Yeah, so we've had a wide range of research modules throughout the three years of the course so far. And these have been both qualitative and quantitative in nature. So that means that they've just been focused on numbers in some parts. And then we had one module that was focused on kind of the interview techniques Brilliant. and how to conduct a focus group. So that was really interesting. It was different to the other ones, which are kind of based on statistics. And it was really interesting as well. When I was coming into the course, I was a bit nervous about that because I wouldn't be the strongest at maths, but it's really just about computers and learning where to put the numbers. So I found that great. And yeah, the research has been really good. We've learned about how to assess the reliability of sources and how to correctly write a research report. So I think all this will be really beneficial just going forward and further in our careers in psychology. Definitely, Sarah. And last and finally, Ollie obviously mentioned the benefits of having lecturers who have obviously worked in the field. So do you find it easy to rely on your lecturers, for example, for advice and obviously to ask them any questions? Where, for example, as you said, that you were a little bit nervous about maths, but thankfully it wasn't embedded too much in the course. Do you find that your relationship with the lecturers really benefits you as a student? Yeah, definitely. The lecturers on the programme are excellent like they're definitely so approachable and we have small class sizes as well which makes it so much easier to have discussions in classes with the lecturers we do that kind of applied element with debates and different research projects so definitely the lecturers have been really good and supportive along the way throughout the three years Brilliant. And Ollie, coming back to you, I think it's important that we obviously talk about other programmes as well. I know that applied psychology is so popular with our CAO applicants, but also social care and early years care education is just as popular. I know that work placement is embedded in all of the programmes. So do you want to talk a little bit about the benefits of this? Yeah, well, work placement, as I say, is probably the foundation stone of, of our early years programme and also of our social care programmes. It gives the students a real taste from the mm -hmm. second year of the program to what what the working life is going to be like. So uh, we've been doing social care now for over 40 years. So I, I think at this stage we've learned a lot. We have great <laughs> relationships with placement agencies. So, you know, right throughout the Midlands, we have really strong connections and relationships. So students have a lot to choice in terms of the type of, of setting, if you want to call it that, that, mm -hmm. they, that they gain experience in. So they can be working with children, they can be working in residential care, they can be working in daycare, they can be working with people with learning difficulties, they can be working with young people on youth projects, working with, with Garda Diversion programs. So the whole range of, of possibilities. Um, so the students get a choice maybe in their first placement to do something that we advise them to do, just to get their sort of foot in the door and gain some experience. And by the time they choose a second placement, then they're much better informed themselves to try and choose a placement that might have a, a, an area that they might be interested in working in their longer term careers. So it's kind of a, a way to, to test drive the car, so to speak, and get a sense of what you like and maybe what, what, you, what you mightn't be as comfortable doing. Mm -hmm. But by the end of the, of the programme, all students have accumulated somewhere in the region of about 23 weeks of experience, Excellent. which yeah. is considerable. Mm -hmm. That's when I say weeks, I mean the full working week. Mm -hmm. um, so it gives them a real taste to see, is this, is this the field for mm -hmm. them? Definitely. And uh, the number of students who, who stay in the field actually are very strong. So retention rates are excellent. And, and once students get jobs in the field, and there's lots of them at the moment, lots of, of career opportunities there, they tend to. Brilliant. And Ollie, I think what you mentioned there is really important as well, that in and completing work placement gives students the opportunity to find that niche area. Obviously, Sarah mentioned that she covered a lot of areas during her work placement. So it's a really great opportunity to figure out what area is for you, and what area do you love? And obviously then, as you said, you have the foot in the door somewhere and the retention rates are great. So do you want to talk a little bit about career opportunities as well across the board? I know that we have lots of career opportunities within your department itself, but just to highlight a couple of them. Yeah, and in, in relation to social care in particular? Or, yeah, all yeah. of them, go for it. Okay, yeah, social care in particular. I mean, lots of our, our graduates last year, for example, they got jobs with a lot of these, these new employers in the field of social care, like Nui Healthcare, mm -hmm. uh, for example. So they're, they're recruiting really widely and broadly 
So they probably recruited uh, somewhere in the region about 30 or 40 of our students last year alone. Wow. So, uh, so they're coming on campus. They want to meet the students, uh, have, have, have classes with, with the students, maybe mm -hmm. a month or two before they graduate. Just Excellent. give them a taste of, of the kind of jobs. Mm -hmm. Lots of demand at the moment for residential setting. Wow. And uh, one good thing at the moment, there's lots of demand for male social care graduates. Um, obviously working uh, in settings that, that require maybe a mix of, of a, a gender mix. There's traditionally um, uh, females are, are, are probably overrepresented in the field, like, like other areas, like nursing and other mm -hmm. care fields. Mm -hmm. Same applies in social care. So they're actively recruiting more males. Uh, we have quite a few uh, uh, males on the course as well, mm -hmm. so that's, they, they look to Athlone uh, quite a bit to, to recruit. Okay. Um, so yes, yeah, very broad. I mean, there's, there's jobs mm -hmm. in all of the sectors. There's jobs in residential. There's jobs in daycare, there's jobs working with young people. Um, and uh, yeah, broadly mm -hmm. it's pretty similar, but, but more jobs now than there were, were, let's say, three or four or five years ago. Excellent. And I know that you mentioned students who are looking to maybe study applied psychology, that there's areas to go into, obviously, research afterwards. I know that you mentioned the benefits of, the, for example, the research methods. But what kind of career opportunities do they have outside of studying? Okay, yeah. Uh, psychology, I suppose, has three or four broad areas that, mm -hmm. that people will easily identify with. So clinical psychology, which is mm -hmm. a, the profession that I, 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 as a psychology graduate, I went on to, to do, to do my, my uh, PhD in, in, in clinical. Wow. Um, other areas are forensic psychology, which is kind of a niche area, but very interesting. So if you look at all the, all, all the programs on TV over the last number of years are, are, are on, you know, so look, looking at kind of solving crimes, et cetera, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that area of psychology, that forensics area is, you know, along with the broader forensic science area, is really popular. Mm -hmm. Sports psychology is a relatively new field, but uh, that's that's quite attractive. Educational psychology is another yeah. one. And finally, uh, organizational or occupational psychology. So okay. if you like applying the lessons of psychology to, to a business context and to an organizational setting. So quite a broad field. Um, but what an undergraduate program essentially equips you to do is, is a passport to doing uh, a postgraduate training in one of those other areas. Brilliant. And in general, uh, it's a minimum of a year. Uh, and in the case of clinical, it's three years. Okay, okay, that's really good and really interesting to know and important for students who are researching as well. And obviously, last and finally, what kind of career opportunities are there within the early years care and education field? Yeah, early years care and education um, is going through change at the moment. So okay. uh, the Department of Education uh, nationally is accrediting or approving rather uh, all of the, under, the undergraduate uh, early years uh, education and care programs. Uh, and that process is happening between now and September 2022. Okay, um, so we're ourselves going through that process at the moment. We're submitting to the Department of Education in the next couple of days. Uh, our, pro our two programs are Level 7 and our Level 8 for uh, approval. So the graduates coming off um, the early years tend to work in with these sort of zero to six age groups. So they're working okay. with babies. Okay. Uh, they're working with uh, sort of zero to 18 months. And then they're working with sort of 18 months to three years and then three to six. So okay. placements tend to be in those areas. So some, some facilities and agencies provide care across all those areas. Some specialize in working with the younger children. Others specialize in working with the sort of 18 months to three or, or the three to six years. Depends on the setting. Um, but as, again, it's very hands-on. It's a bit like social care. It's very hands-on experience. You're working directly with kids uh, and young children from the day that you get in. Obviously, under supervision, mm -hmm. um, staff staff uh, uh, child ratios are are fairly high. So you've got you know one member staff maybe working with six or seven children. So having students on placement is a real asset for the agency. Really helps them, uh, you know, r run the service with, yeah, with the benefit definitely. of. But it, but primarily that that is all about the student learning and, and student development. So over the course of the three years on the program, students undertake again roughly slightly more hours than the social care even, around about 1,200 hours of placement wow. over the course of a three-year and a little bit more over the course of a four-year programme. Excellent. And Ollie, I think it's really important to everything you've mentioned there is for both students and parents watching to have a really good understanding of the amazing opportunities within the department. And I think just to finish up, I might ask you to maybe give a little bit of advice. So Sarah, I'm going to come to you first. If you were your 16-year-old self slash 17 and you're in sixth year again and you're embarking on your leaving search in the next couple of weeks, what kind of advice would you give to a sixth-year applicant who might be looking at maybe doing applied psychology or even just coming to AIT in general? 
I'd say definitely don't put too much pressure on yourself to have everything figured out if you're not sure what you want to do yet. Uh, definitely the college here is so responsive to queries. So if you have any questions about any of the courses or the AIT in general, just uh, drop an email or an Instagram DM or something and someone will get back to you. So don't worry too much about it. Excellent. Sarah and Ollie, any advice from yourself? If I was my 16 year old self again, <laughs> yeah, um, if I could remember that. Yeah, I would say, yeah, I mean, one of the things that differentiates uh, AIT, I think, from a lot of educational providers is is what Sarah just referred to mm -hmm. there, is that we, we'll be very happy to talk to you. If you have queries, if you're uncertain, right up to the wire, uh, just drop us an email. Uh, my email address is ohagerty at AIT.ie, uh, and uh, very happy to talk to you over the phone, answer any questions rather than just reply by email. Mm -hmm. So happy to do that. Uh, and, um, you know, come, come, come and visit the campus when, yeah. when it's safe to do so again uh, and, and get a feel for it. But uh, just finally, our retention rates are very high, which means uh, that when students choose a course on AIT, and particularly in social science, they tend to stay on the course. Excellent. And so our dropout rates are very, very low. So that means students are making the right choices. Mm -hmm. And that means they're doing the right research that they need to do before choosing their course. Excellent. So thank you so much to both Ollie and Sarah for joining me today for this live panel discussion. I think what they mentioned at the end there is so important that definitely do reach out. If you have any queries, you can touch base with Ollie yourself or even if you want to have a chat with Sarah about what it's like to be an applied psychology student, we are more than happy to facilitate that. So thank you so much for joining us on this live panel discussion today. Thank you.